Right. And yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing up the issue with the sort of social media battlefield and something that kind of worries me about uh, basically what, what we're trying to do is, you know, we're trying to reach people and change minds and you're trying to reach people and change minds. Um, but then sometimes, especially with alternative media, and if you're especially expressing a not so popular point of view, you can run into this issue of attracting the, the, the cranks, the ne'er-do-wells, people who are kind of the misfits of society. Um, and I, I, granted, I don't know everything about uh, every politician or political, so I might offend someone when I, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, she seems like she's absolutely insane to me, but she also says a lot of things that are good. And it's sort of like, is she saying those things because she's just a permanent skeptic of main institutions? Or does she actually really know more about things than other people or some combination of both? And does that help us if we're ever associated with someone who has that negative stigma of being kind of a crank, kind of outside of the norm? you know, prone to, you know, conspiracy theory, things like that. And that, that makes it hard to affect any kind of change when you attract too many cranks and weirdos and people who don't have the best reputation, which, I mean, then, then again, of course, reputations can be just smear campaigns as well. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say someone has a bad reputation. It's just inherently bad, you know, but I, I mean, do you, sort of have that same fear and, and contend with that and worry about, you know, how do you, how do you change people's minds when you're holding an opinion that isn't the mainstream opinion and how do you avoid just accumulating wasters and strays, you know? No, I mean, this is uh, I mean, this is one of the fundamental questions, especially, um, you know, now I'm going to get into a topic that nobody really likes to talk about on uh because you, you, you hear everybody go, hit the like buttons, hit this button. Hit. Why? Why do you want them to hit the like buttons? Are you trying to monetize your account? And that's okay. But nobody talks about it. We all pretend that we're not. Or, you know, oh, money doesn't mean anything. Money means everything. That's how you make a living. That's how you pay your bills. Um, and so when you factor in monetization, the need to earn an income, because, again, we're not mainstream media. You know, we don't have GE writing the big paycheck every day. Um, for for channels like yours and mine and others to stay on, we need to not only attract viewership, but we have to manage the account in a way that attracts enough monetary resources to make this sustainable. Because if you can't sustain it, it gets shut down. So now you're running into, you know, a whole bunch of problems. Because if, for instance, on YouTube, I mean, I'll just be straight up. Um, I had got my YouTube account to a point where it had the potential of making eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, that's not millions, but I don't know about you, but you know, that pays bills. And then YouTube demonetized me and banned me because my message was inconvenient or or whatever. Um, and there's people out there where this would be devastating. Unfortunately, I write. If I ever stop Twitter wars and get to back to writing articles that generate income. So I don't have to worry about that. But if my business model was contingent upon YouTube, um, you know, it being monetized on YouTube um, and I've shaped my, my, the way I, I, I operate such that I've built up this, this, this following that allows uh, monetization, then I lose it all. I mean, that's a crushing blow and that's happened to a lot of people and that's, that's a problem. And so there's, there's organizations out there or networks that are designed to collapse the monetization capability of um, channels they don't like. NAFO. NAFO has an entire, the, this North Atlantic Fellows Organization. They have an entire mm -hmm. uh, attack model, which is based upon just simply flooding the system with complaints, uh, et cetera, and so that the algorithm kicks you up as a problem and, and the system shuts you down automatically. Um, they're, they're masters at that. And so when you, when you attract, when you, when you take on certain topics that people don't like, um, you know, they, 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 they come at you hard and then 
that now pollutes your, uh, your, you know, your, 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 your folly so that you don't have a clean feed anymore. Because now if you put something out there, people have to navigate through, you know, just scads of garbage and crap and smear and everything to get to whatever substance the, the, there may be out there. Um, I mean, this is, this is, this is all problematic, but you can't look, the business model is this. Let's talk about two successful business models in, in, uh, in, in, in alternative media, Tucker Carlson and uh, Jackson Hinkle. Um, oh, we can even talk about Alex Jones, who's, who's yeah. and again, I'm not saying anything about their messaging and all that. All I'm saying is that their approach has been the way you push through the nonsense that we just talked about that can take down is to go big, uh, get so big that it doesn't matter that the, that the, 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 the naysayers, the haters out there get drowned out by the other volume of people who want to follow you. And that's sort of a good place to be, but how do you get that big? Um, what compromises did you have to make to get that big? Um, you know, or what 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 uh, things did you have to do? I mean, I'm not picking on Jackson Ankle, very successful model, uh, and I like Jackson. I mean, I've met him. I think he's a great guy. But Jackson is a very heavy self promoter, a very heavy self promoter, and he goes out there and he he does things. He he promotes himself in a way that I, for instance, would be extraordinarily uncomfortable promoting myself that way. Um, it, it works for him. It wouldn't work for me. Uh, Tucker had the benefit of coming off of Fox and, and, and able to build up on that. But, you know, he went big real quick. And then, he, you know, he did. He got in with X, with Elon. He got the, the interview with Putin. Big, big platform. Alex Jones just has a huge platform uh, to begin with. Um, how do we all get? I mean, we'd all love to have that problem. <laughs> oh, gosh. I woke up this morning. You know, I, I've got 20 million followers. Um you know, five million who are willing to pay two dollars a month to listen to me. Ten million dollar a month income stream coming in. Wouldn't we all love to have that problem? Um, you know, so, but that's everybody's goal and objective. But how do you get there? How how do you do it? And how do you maintain um, integrity? How do you maintain consistency, et cetera? You know, and I I, I have to say, I mean, I, I I I'm not saying that I'm unsuccessful, but when I look at the my numbers compared to other people. I don't have numbers like like these other people. I'm pretty proud of the product I put out. It's difficult, though. How, how do you – what emphasis do you place on marketing or on um, quality control, on making sure uh, that – you know, I, I tend to spend most of my time trying to read up on things and sit down and analyze it so that when I answer questions, uh, at least comes from a place of, you know, a little bit of informed – uh, speculation because we're all speculating. We're all sitting on our butts thousands of miles removed from the real target. We don't have real knowledge. We weren't, I wasn't at the front line yesterday. So I have to read what other people write. Then I have to put on bias filters, take that out of putting my own template on, see how things work out. But I, I think it works. I think at the end of the day, I, I put out analysis that um, is fact-based and uh, I have a fairly good track record over time, not perfect, but a fairly good track record over time, you know, trying to do predictive analysis. Um, so I'm proud of the product, but the product maybe isn't um, a product that is conducive to bring in the numbers necessary to build a business model that can rival Tucker Carlson, Jackson Hinkle, or Alex Jones. It's a, it's a problem, but, you know, getting back to your question, how do you filter out the crazies? Um, I think once you, if you get involved in filtering too soon, you'll never build, you'll never build a base that you, and, you know, basically what you have to do, I believe is have an absolute open door policy um, and bring everybody in and hope that the quality of your product uh, has a self filtering aspect to it. Meaning that um, the you'll, you'll attract a better audience so that, the, the naysayers and the ill-wishers um, become a minority member of a community. And when they find out that they can't um, you know, change you, if they can't put you off track, then they, they withdraw um, and you end up with a better, a, a better community. So I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of just saying anybody and everybody. And the other thing is 
I have no problem with liking an idea. Um, meaning that if you put out a tweet that makes sense, I like it. I'll repost it. But that doesn't mean that I'm in love with you or any, or, or, or I'm automatically support other things you that are out there. It's about ideas. It's about the battle of ideas. And you have to be comfortable enough with your own filter. Um, now, again, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go liking Adolf live today and tweeting. I, I, I may not want to follow Adolf Hitler. But, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you don't have to agree with her thing. But, you know, she, when she picks a, a battle and she starts saying the right things in that battle, um, have confidence enough that your followers will understand that that's why you're liking that tweet. Not because of her stance on this, that, or the other thing. It's because on this particular issue, she might be saying something that's the right thing to say. And I think if you allow yourself to have that kind of open mind and have confidence in who you are, uh, so that you don't allow yourself, because it, it's it's a fairly uh, it's it's a person that lacks confidence who gets worried about what other people think um, on issues of importance. If you're if you're sitting here going, ah, what are they going to say if I? Uh, if I, if I do this, then you're not very confident. You don't have confidence in your, uh, in your messaging. But if you, if, if you have confidence, in your messaging, and that's the thing about the social media is that exude that confidence, go out there, be confident, be accurate, but be confident. And I think that that will attract more people than playing it safe and, uh, and, and, and trying to, you know, only have the right thinking people around you. <laughs> you have a very small audience if, if that's your approach. Right. Right. And, and I mean, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not so much concerned about like myself looking bad. I mean, I'm not even really out there, um, but I, I would say more for the, the ideas in general um, being associated with certain controversial, let's say figures or whatever. But I think what you said, it, it's, it's the same idea. If you have to have confidence in your, your own ideas uh, or, or the idea or the movement or whatever you want to call it that, basically a, a few hangers on aren't going to spoil the whole thing. Um, you know, like I said, but, I don't, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, the way this works, I, I think that this is, this is my approach. Again, I'm not an expert on this, but you know, for instance, I have a, I mean, I was surprised to find that, you know, I was surprised to find that I had 310,000 followers on X the other day. Uh, I'm, you know, that that's for me, that's, it's an amazing thing but i'm just certain a certain number of them are bots you know i mean you know they have things like you know nudes in bio um kind of kind of things but uh, you know yay um and and i'm <laughs> also certain that uh, many of them just hate me and they're following me to to hate me so that they can you know hate respond on that stuff but what i'm saying let's let's talk about let's let's say that 70 percent of them are legitimate followers um I can guarantee you they come from diverse groups. Uh, that that's not a homogeneous, uh, you know, it's not a homogenous group. Um, I know that I, I follow some controversial people. Alex Jones. I know that I have Alex Jones followers. I know that I have followers from um, from from the the you know the 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 black community um, that that probably don't like Alex Jones, but they follow me. I have followers from Ryan Dawson. I have followers uh, from, you know, left wing. I have followers from the right wing. I have, why? Because I follow them um, is, is sort of how do you learn? You don't learn by shutting down avenues of information. You learn by absorbing information and having confidence in your bias filters, confidence in your own quality control. But, you know, in Alex Jones, I don't have every Alex Jones follower, but I, I might have some Alex Jones followers who listened to me on his program and liked what I said about um, about nuclear disarmament and the need to prevent a nuclear war. That doesn't mean we agree on everything. It just means on this issue, we agree. I have a lot of followers now in the Palestinian community. Uh, I may have lost a lot of followers in the Israeli community. Um, you know, there's, you know, I, could, I probably don't have too many followers in the Ukrainian community. I have a lot of followers in the Russian community. But the point is, it's a very diverse community uh, there in I only have them because I had the courage to reach out and connect with people that people would have otherwise said, yeah, you don't want like, you know, Alex Jones, I've met him. I like Alex Jones. I think he's a very intelligent guy. I don't agree with everything he says. I'm sure he doesn't agree with everything I say, but we at least respect our, our respective rights to say it. And we need to protect each other's right to say it. 
Um, that's what this is all about. This is about free speech. And so we should all be supporting each other, not because we agree with each other, but that we agree on the principle of free speech. And that if we're going to have an effective alternative media um, community, we have to understand that there is a need for disagreement. Informed debate, discussion, and dialogue is the thing that makes any society better, stronger. And so I, I think shutting people out because of controversial points of view, et cetera, I think it's a little unhealthy because, you know what, at some point in time, they're going to say that we're controversial points of view and that we should be shut out. And that's the last thing we need if we're trying to build a following that makes the continuation of our efforts of, of viable. So I'm a big fan of opening the door and letting those who want to come in and um, and being open to, to hear everything. We know what hate speech is. We know what hate speech is. You know it when you see it. Um, and if you see it, yeah, I, I have no problem when you see hate speech, uh, shutting it down, blocking it, filtering it. But disagreement isn't hate speech. I know sometimes in this uh, emotionally driven world, we view it as hate speech. But the fact that somebody disagrees with me is not a reason to block them. It's actually a, a, a better reason to engage with them, to find out why they disagree with me and see if we can have a healthy dialogue about it and maybe learn. I can tell you what. All the people on X and Telegram and all that who disagree with me, who engage with me constructively, I learn from because I don't claim to be the end all of everything. Um, you know, I operate off of my information base, which is admittedly incomplete in many areas. And if somebody wants to take the time to engage with me responsibly, they teach me things. And then my argument gets better, it gets stronger. And I'd like to believe that I can teach them some things and their argument gets better and stronger. We can still disagree with one another, but that's healthy. That's healthy. If this was all just a bunch of, you know, yes, nodders, just blindly following, what a boring world we live in. We need that disagreement so we can get to the truth. We can get to a better understanding so we can have the right answers by defining the right problems. Um, but it has to be done responsibly. You're not going to have that disagreement if you all you do is surround yourself with like thinkers and people who uh, who support you. You know, I like the idea of supporters. Everybody likes the idea of supporters. Uh, and I like the idea of followers. Everybody likes that. But what does that imply? Blind allegiance? No, man. If you follow me, if you support me and you disagree with me, it's your duty and responsibility to tell me. Uh, because otherwise, you're just a strap hanger. You don't bring anything to this to this except a number. Um I'm not so much in the numbers game. I'm in the quality game. And quality means that you can say, hey, I, I like your ideas. I like the direction you're heading. But I have a problem with this, that, and the other thing. And I learned from that. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah, I will say that my time on uh, X has been – I'm more exposed to people who think differently than me. Uh, Telegram is a li little bit more uh, segregated between communities. Uh, like, I've – done live streams and things like that where i've been waiting for maybe like someone who's pro-ukrainian to jump in and argue doesn't really happen i mean i've had a couple of trolls jump in in, in, the, in the time that i've done this but uh that's it uh no, no one actually trying to come in and say i disagree with you because of x y or z uh maybe one in like a year of doing it um but yeah i, I mean i really appreciate you uh you know that was you know pretty frank explanation of what it's like to sort of be working in alternative media. Uh, you, you mentioned the whole monetary aspect. You know, you always get people who want to push back and say like, you know, oh, you're if you're doing things for money, then it's inherently bad and that you're supposed to be doing it for the love of it or something like that. And I mean, like you said, at the end of the day, it's income that's going to power people's ability to keep working in this regard. And, you know, frankly, you know, I, I, I'm... I don't understand how people can think that way that, oh, you can just keep putting out the kind of, you, you know, work that you and others put out without having some kind of ability to feed your families, you know. Um, you know 